Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this result. So this result is concerned with this power series. So we have this power series and it has some disk of convergence. I have shown here, right? Disk of convergence, that means if you take any point inside disk, then for that point, the series is convergent. And if you take any point outside disk, then for that point, the series is divergent, right? So such disk of convergence we have and C is a simple closed curve. Simple that means it does not intersect itself. Get it? It does not intersect itself like this. And it is a closed curve. That means the starting and ending point is same. So let me show here. This is a simple closed curve C, right? Starting and ending point same. And C, it lies in the interior part of this. This closed curve C entirely lies inside that disk, right? We have to prove that if power series is this one, its derivative can be calculated in this one, right? We are familiar with this formula. Derivative of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1. That means what we do when we have x raised to n to find its derivative, we write its power here and we reduce its power by 1. Actually, same thing you can see in this two series. N is constant, so that's why it is kept as it is. And the power is N. So N is written here and the power is reduced by 1. That means same formula is applicable. But see, this thing we have to prove. Okay, so let us start to prove. Let me remove this one. So we will have some more space to write. See, proof is little bit constructive, very small constructions we are going to do. And with the help of that, we will easily prove this theorem. Okay, so let us start. Let Z be any point which lies in an interior part of C interior part of C. Okay, so C is a closed curve. So it divides the region in two parts, interior and exterior. So I'm taking one point Z, which lies in an interior part of C, right? One more function I'm going to define. So let us define that function, G of S. This is also part of our construction. It is 1 upon 2 pi i into 1 upon S minus Z square. Here Z is a point which we have taken and S is any point on that curve C where S is a point on curve C. You can take any point S on this curve, right? Okay. So clearly G is a continuous function. Clearly G is continuous on C. So we can say G is continuous because G is not continuous if denominator is 0. And when we will have denominator 0, if S is equal to Z. But see, Z lies in the interior part of C and S is on a boundary of C. That's why both of them cannot be equal and you will we will never have 0 in denominator. So that's why clearly G is continuous on C. So if G is continuous on C by previous theorem, which we have already proved in previous video. So that theorem says there is term by term integration. Okay, so let me write here. Then by term by term integration, integration. So let me write, what can we write by term by term integration? Let me write here. So using that theorem, we can write here integration over C G of S S of S DS is equal to summation n running from 0 to infinity n integration over C G of S S minus Z not raised to n DS. Okay. So S of S, actually in a given question or in a statement, we have S of Z. So simply I replace Z by S just for our convenience, right? I have replaced Z by S. So here we have S of S. S capital S stands for a power series and small s is a variable, right? Like this one. Yes, S is a, S is a small s point on a curve C. 
See, a uh, term by term integration, that means actually capital S is nothing but this power series. It means we have a summation inside the integration. And here what we do, we interchange them and we write summation outside and integration inside. Get, get it? So this is term by term integration. And with the help of that, I got this one. So let me call it as equation number one. So that equation number one has two sides, left hand side and right hand side. We are going to calculate both values. Okay, so let us consider left hand side first. Let me remove this diagram. It is not required now. So let us consider left hand side. Okay. So left hand side, what is left hand side? Integration over C, G of S, capital S of S, DS. But see, we have the value of G of S. So let us put this value there. So we will have integration over C. Its value is 1 upon 2 pi i 1 upon s minus z square into s of s ds. So you know that whenever we have a constant, we take it outside. So here 1 upon 2 pi i is constant. I am taking outside 1 upon 2 pi i integration over c. It is in numerator s of s divided by s minus z square ds. So after that, I'm going to use corollary of Cauchy's integral formula. But see, for that, I need more space to write. So make a screenshot of it first, then I will go further. So by that corollary of Cauchy's integral formula, we can write integration over C f of z upon z minus z naught rest to n dz is equal to 2 pi i upon n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 derivative of f at z naught. So this is corollary of Cauchy's integral formula and I'm going to use it here. Okay, so let us see what will happen 1 upon 2 pi r as it is. So we are going to find the value of this integration using this formula, right? So this formula says 2 pi i as it is upon n minus 1 factorial n means power of this bracket. What is power of this bracket? 2. So that's why 2 minus 1, that means only 1 factorial. After that, n minus 1 derivative of f. f means a numerator, right? So here numerator is s. So that's why I should write derivative of s. n minus 1 derivative. n is 2. Getting n n means power. Power is 2. So 2 minus 1, that means 1. So that's why we take a single derivative since the value of n minus 1 is 1 at z naught getting at z naught z naught that means this point z minus z naught so what we have here s minus z so here i should write z right so i should mention somewhere let me mention in short by corollary of Cauchy's integral formula so by corollary of Cauchy's integral formula i got this one let me remove this one and let us continue here. Okay, so let me remove this part. What will happen that 1 upon 2 pi i and 2 pi i will get cancelled to each other. 1 factorial means 1. So it's, it is equal to s dash of z. So that means the value of left hand side is s dash of z. Okay, so we got the value of left hand side. So let us start to work on right hand side. Let me write right hand side. What is right hand side? Let us copy first summation n running from 0 to infinity a n integration over c g of s s minus z naught raised to n ds. So this is equal to summation n running from 0 to infinity a n integration over c. So we have the value of g of s. Let us put here. Here also we had done the same. The value of g of s is this one. So let us write here 1 upon 2 pi i into 1 upon s minus z square into we have this s minus z naught raised to n ds. So you know that when we solve any integration and if there is any constant, we take it outside. So 1 upon 2 pi is a constant. Let us take it outside. So summation n running from 0 to infinity a n into 1 upon 2 pi i integration over c at numerator we have s minus z naught raised to n 
and in denominator we have s minus z square ds. So here also I'm going to use corollary of Cauchy's integral formula that means same formula okay. There is a need of more space just make a screenshot of it then we will go further. So let me write the corollary of Cauchy's integral formula here. So that formula is integration over c f of z upon z minus z naught raised to n dz is equal to 2 pi i upon n minus 1 factorial n minus 1 derivative of f at z naught right. So if you compare at a place of f of z we have this one at a place of z we have s at a place of z naught we have z and value of n is 2 here okay don't get confused this n is different power of z is power of this bracket is n power of this bracket is 2 that means value of n is 2 so let us use that corollary of Cauchy's integral formula so first of all we should copy paste this term okay a n into 1 upon 2 pi i so that corollary says 2 pi i I am using the formula upon n minus 1 the value of n is 1 so that's why it is 1 factorial after that we take n minus 1 derivative n is 1 so that's why we have to take just first derivative right first derivative first derivative of what first derivative of this f f means this numerator getting so we have to take its first derivative s minus z naught raised to n so into into what we have to write ds okay sorry integration already we have got the answer so no need to write anything but see uh, did you notice f z naught so here z naught is z so i should write z here so directly i will take derivative with respect to z okay so let us do that let me remove this part so we'll have some more space to write and we should mention by corollary by uh, where shall i write let us write here by corollary of Cauchy's integral formula okay so uh, this is equal to summation n running from 0 to infinity this 2 pi and 2 pi will get cancelled a n its derivative will be n z minus z naught raised to n minus 1 this thing i got right see after that if i put n is equal to 0 so you know that when we expand the summation we put the values of n n 0 1 2 and so on if i put 0 we will have 0 so no need to consider the first term directly we can start with n is equal to 1 to infinity n this n z minus z naught raised to n minus 1 so this is value of right hand side so we have calculated both sides left hand side and right hand side so let us put those values back in equation 1 so then 1 becomes what can we write 1 becomes so the left hand side is s dash of z and what is value of right hand side this one summation and running from 1 to infinity n n z minus z naught raised to n minus 1 so in this way we prove the theorem so this theorem is also known as term by term differentiation of power series okay term by term differentiation and we proved it make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you